we? We have, yeah. Wildlife cameraman Richard Taylor-Jones has been given special access to the team who are monitoring the whale, which at the moment is in Gravesend in Kent. Within hours of a beluga whale being seen in the River Thames almost two weeks ago, I was at Gravesend, and with a bit of patience, I managed to get some shots. And I've been coming back since because Basically, it's just the most bizarre sight. Belugas are normally found over 1,500 kilometres north of here in Arctic seas. A couple were spotted off Northumberland in 2015, but it's extremely rare to see them in UK waters. Yet this isn't the first time a whale has lost its way. In January 2006, a northern bottlenose female, usually found in the Atlantic, also ended up in the River Thames. Rescuers battling to save the whale stranded in the Thames say the next few hours will be critical to its survival. A rescue team tried to transport it back to open waters. Stephen Marsh from British Divers Marine Life Rescue was at the scene. So things didn't end well in 2006, did they? Well, sadly, the whale died, but now we know that that particular species, northern bottlenose whale, would start suffering probably within two hours of actually stranding. And we didn't know that at the time. For the last week, I've had exclusive access to the team who are monitoring the beluga and deciding what steps to take, ensuring its well-being. The beluga whale is a totally different species and every response is different as well. We have no idea how it got here, but there were storms out in the North Sea. It may already have been in the North Sea for some reason and then come into the estuary for shelter. Normally found in groups, they do quite often go off on their own, and in Canada, they can live and breed around busy shipping lanes. In terms of a habitat, this isn't too bad for it, but what we're concerned about is whether it is finding the right food, whether it is fit, whether it is healthy. To keep it safe from river traffic, the Port of London has set up an exclusion zone, but the other big concern is whether it's eating. Fish, which belugas naturally eat, are found here, but crucially, we need to find out if it's feeding. As you can see, the waters of the Thames have near zero visibility, so the only way to really monitor the animal is by listening to it. Alan Knight is the chairman of British Divers Marine Life Rescue. So this is a Chelonia sea pod, which is uh, an extremely sensitive underwater microphone. So the hope is that we'll be able to pick up the clicks that the animal's making. Belugas use clicks as part of echolocation to navigate and find prey. When their clicks hit an underwater object, the reflected sound is picked up by the whale. But to translate their sounds, the team need to consult experts. Dr Nick Tregenza in Cornwall has studied belugas in the Arctic and specialises in underwater acoustics. The clicks are out of our hearing range, so the software presents them as lines on a graph. We Skype Nick as the results come in. So, Nick, million dollar question, have you got anything for us? Yes, we've got one definite beluga click train. Unfortunately, most of the reading is swamped by boat noise. Most boats use depth finders to navigate, and the frequencies are very similar to our whales' clicks. But Nick has managed to locate a tiny sequence of beluga clicks. So the red ones at each end, they're a depth finder, and the beluga is these coloured bars in between, and it's clicking at like 10 clicks a second. I've got tonnes of data from the Arctic, and it looks just like that. Although the reading doesn't show it's feeding, it does indicate it's behaving normally. It could well be foraging, you know, looking for fish, and we can say it's looking about 75 metres ahead of where it is. Stephen. What do you make of that? It's great news that it's doing what it should be doing. Yeah. Our buzzwords are observe and protect. People have been asking, well, can we catch it and move it on? If we do net it, then it will be incredibly stressed. So we're not going to be netting it. The pressure is off in terms of um, it being in the wrong sort of habitat. It's, it's, it's OK for it. It can survive. So for now, the aim is to keep monitoring it, but leave well alone. The beluga may make its own decision and disappear and that may well be the best thing for it. Another reason why people shouldn't hate the English, we've got our own beluga whale. <laughs> <laughs> that poor whale's going, oh, no pictures, no pictures! Leave <laughs> 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 me alone, we're up lost, help! <laughs> the poor